Hello, my name is Camille and welcome to my channel. A while back I have made a series of videos about how to photograph and edit the images of the night sky, in particular the Milky Way. And by the way, if you have not seen these videos yet, I can highly recommend you check them out. Link to the entire playlist is right here and also in the description box of this video. But the way I was processing those images was using different white balance and color balance techniques, which produced a very pleasing final result, but the colors that I was getting out of those images were not exactly accurate and not very natural when it comes to colors of the night sky. So in this video, I will show you how to process the images of the night sky of the Milky Way in moderate levels of light pollution areas in a way to preserve maximum amount of accuracy and natural colors of the stars and nebula and things in the night sky. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so before we start, let me just say one thing, that the technique that I'm about to show you in this video is not exactly something that I have figured out by myself, I'm just following a guide by a very well-respected resource which is clarkvision.com and the articles that are on this website. I'm gonna link to this website down below if you wanna check them out and also to the article that I am following in this video and this edit in particular. So if you wanna dive deep and learn more about this technique and why some things are done this way and not another, definitely check out those articles. But let me warn you that these articles are rather written for an advanced user and when I was starting out with astrophotography I have real troubles understanding and following those guidelines. And actually one of my first images of the Milky Way I tried to follow this very guide and I failed miserably. So in this video I will break it down in an easy to understand way so you can see exactly what happens step by step on an actual image of the night sky so you can recreate these steps in your edits. And also I'm not gonna do live editing like I usually do on the tutorials on my channel because there's just so many parameters, so much tweaking around tiny parameters that if I were to do it live on camera it would just take so much time and it would be just a waste of both your and my time. So instead I'm just gonna go through all the adjustment layers in my Photoshop document and explain exactly what this adjustment layer does what are the parameters and why those parameters are the way they are. So let's dive into Photoshop right now. Okay, so here is our image. Uh, this is the image that you may recognize if you have watched one of my previous videos, but basically we have the sky and we have the foreground and we have the car with the lights on. Here on the right side of Photoshop, we can see that we have three groups. So the image consists of three main groups. First group is the car lights. I have taken a separate exposure with much shorter shutter speed in order to catch the lights that were turned on the car and then blended it in into the final image. But this step is definitely not necessary and out of the scope of this tutorial. So let's just ignore it for now. The second group here is our ground. If I turn it off, you can see how it looks. If I turn both of these, we can see only the sky. And in order to have ground separately edited than the sky, we need a fine tuned selection of the ground. And especially in an image like this, when you have an uneven tree line like this, it's not exactly trivial and it's kind of complicated. And separating the ground from the sky on images like this definitely deserves a separate video. I was actually using a paid plugin called Lumensi which is a luminosity masking plugin. It can really fine tune all the details of mask, etc. If you would like to see a tutorial of how exactly did I mask out the ground from the sky in this image, I can make a separate tutorial. Let me know down below in the comments if you're interested in this tutorial because it's a vast topic and I'm not gonna cover it now. For now, let's assume that we have a good selection and a good separation between the ground and the sky. So the third group here is our sky and if we expand this, we can see a lot of adjustment layers. And if I disable all of them, we can see the base exposure that we are starting with. This exposure was taken with white balance set to daylight because this is the white balance that the author of the articles on clarkvision.com actually recommends for recreating the most natural and accurate colors of the night sky. So we are starting with daylight white balance and this image is actually a stack of I think six images or something to reduce noise. So this is our starting point. So the main adjustment layer that we are going to be using for this edit are curves adjustment. And the way that curves adjustment works, let's double click on this one for instance, is that we see a histogram here and this is the histogram of the part of the image that is affected by this curves adjustment. So if we have a layer mask on the curves adjustment, it only shows the histogram of the portion of the image that is sort of revealed by this mask. And this is really handy for this technique, which I'm gonna 
show you in just a moment. And normally the histogram of a light polluted sky is divided into three sections. First section is all the dark tones that actually represent our light pollution. It should be black because it's the sort of the background of the night sky which should be dark. But we have light pollution, it's not dark, it's something a little bit brighter than dark. And this is the portion that we are going to be reducing. Then the middle part is the actual brightness tones of our stars and nebula and basically everything that we are trying to capture on this image. And then the third part is the brighter stars, maybe oversaturated star, maybe something like, for instance, on this picture we have a very bright Mars actually. So the third part of the histogram is not exactly our concern. We're going to be focused on the first part, which corresponds to light pollution. And because we are going to be making adjustment in those curves, adjustment layers, based on the histogram that we see, we need to isolate the sky because if we look at the histogram of the entire image, the pixels that correspond to ground will sort of pollute our information for the adjustment. So we need to select sky only. And this selection can be actually really rough. If we take a look here, I have sky here. And if I decrease the opacity of this layer, you can see that this adjustment is not perfect, but it is important that the layer with the sky only doesn't have any pixels of the ground. So it doesn't have to be the entire sky, but it is very important that we don't have any ground pixels in this layer. So we are going to be using this layer. We have it called it sky only. And the first curves adjustment is looking like this. So we are going to be moving the black point on the curves adjustment layer, but what is important is that we have to do it separately for red, green and blue channels because light pollution is not evenly distributed across the entire spectrum of light. It is more present in the reddish spectrum, then it is less present in the green spectrum and a little bit even less in the blue spectrum. So we need to adjust more aggressively in the red channel, less aggressively in the green channel and the least aggressively in the blue channel. So let's just do that. If we open this drop down, we can switch from RGB to red, green or blue. So let's select red. And the way you do it is that you move this black point. This is the slider here. You just grab this and move it left or right and align it with the lowest value right here, right before the giant peak, which represents the tones of the night sky. And the same goes for green, like here, and the same goes for blue. In blue, it's a little bit tricky, but it will be more obvious on further adjustment layers. So let me just show you the red, and what it does is that all of the tones that are from 0% brightness up to this level are then projected onto complete darkness. And all of the tones from this point on up to 100% are then projected and stretched again on the scale from 0 to 100%. If this is confusing to you, don't worry, curves adjustment layers is actually quite confusing, especially for beginners. And if you would like to see a video with the breakdown of how exactly curves adjustment layers work in Photoshop, let me know down below in the comments. I might consider doing a tutorial about that, but for now, I'm just gonna assume that this is understandable, <laughs> okay? So let's continue. All right, so if I enable this adjustment, you can see what happens. The image got a little bit darker and we can see the dark corners right here. And we need to do this process in a couple of iterations because as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five curves adjustment layers that are very similar. But the thing is that we cannot do it all at once because light pollution is again not evenly distributed and across the entire frame of our image like this. It is the strongest on the horizon at the, at the bottom of our image and it's getting weaker and weaker as we go up further towards the night sky. So what we need to do is we need to select a portion of the image now that excludes the very top part of it and then do this adjustment uh, again. So let's do that. Okay, so here's our second curse adjustment and if I show you the properties of the mask, you can see that the mask is feathered quite a bit, but let's just input zero here so you can see what's going on. And this is basically the selection that I have made for this adjustment. So as you can see, I have selected the entire sky, excluding the very top parts of it. And then I did the same with the curves. So you can check out the red. We can see it's more obvious here to what part do we have to move the black point here. Also on the green channel and also on the blue channel. And then to get rid of this harsh edge of the adjustment here, what I do is just add a bunch of feathering. So let's bring back the feathering and now it blends in nicely. And we need to continue this process in a couple of more steps. So let me just enable these adjustments. It gets darker and darker and darker. 
and we can see the shape of the Milky Way right here. It starts looking pretty good, but what we did with all of those adjustments is that we were darkening and darkening and darkening the image. So right now, let's just brighten it up globally and we do it by another curves adjustment. But this curves adjustment is just a slight convex curve upwards. So we are expanding a little bit of the shadows and compressing a little bit of highlights. So the entire image gets a little bit brighter. And the next step is to bring out more contrast in our sky. So the next curves adjustment is actually an S curve to bring out the contrast. So if I enable that, we can see that we are bringing more contrast into the image. So it starts to look really, really good now. And then we are going to target the S curve contrast adjustments only towards the Milky Way. So the Milky Way pops out of the image, which is the pleasing result that we are going after, right? So let's do that. And this is the selection I have made, just a rough selection around the Milky Way, feathered it a little, and then added an S curve looking like this. It is important that if you want to bring out contrast in specific tones, just look at the histogram and target your S-curve around the tones which are actually on the image. So as you can see here, here are the tones on this portion of the image. So I'm doing the S-curve on these shadows right here. And if I enable that, you can see that the Milky Way pops nicely in our image and it starts to look really, really good now. So the next step is to add a, another S-curve, this time again globally to bring out even more contrast in the image. So let's do that. This is this curves adjustment so you can see another S curve this time globally without any mask. If I enable that we can see that the image starts to be more contrasty, more pleasing to the eye, more cool looking you might say. But what we introduce here is a little bit of oversaturation especially at the bottom of the image. So in order to finish up this edit I have added an HSL adjustment to this image which looks like this and the only thing I did here is just bring down the saturation to minus 67 and if I enable that you can see that the oversaturation and bottom part of the sky goes away. And again I have added a layer mask with a bunch of feathering so you can see that this adjustment is the weakest towards the top and then it gets stronger and stronger towards the bottom exactly as the gradient of the oversaturation <laughs> was happening in the image and now what I need to do is actually disable this sky only layer that we used to make the decisions for all our curves adjustments and then enable the base image which basically turns our edit to look like this and then we can enable our ground we can enable our car lights and this is our final image what do you think? Do you like this edit or do you like the edit with uh, color balance techniques? Let me show you a comparison. The image on the left is edited by using different color balance techniques that I have mentioned before and you can see that the sky is kind of bluish and this is basically the kind of image of the night sky that you are probably used to by you know looking at social media and images of the night sky on platforms like Instagram or Facebook or something and the image on the right is the image processed using these techniques called subtractive techniques which preserve the natural colors of the night sky and please tell me let me know down below in the comments which version of this edit do you prefer i have actually run a poll on a facebook group and subreddit on, on reddit and most of the people actually said that they prefer the image produced by using white balance and color balance adjustments, so the blue one. And I am not really surprised because, like I said, this is probably familiar and this is something that a lot of people are used to when they look up images of the night sky because this is how most photographers, most people actually edit their images. But for me personally, I think the image on the right, which is color accurate, is looking better because, I, I don't know, I don't know, it's, there's something about this image that is just... It looks pretty awesome and I like those warm yellowish and reddish colors. Ultimately, it's up to you as, as, a, as a recipient of the artwork to, to decide which one do you prefer. So please let me know in the comments which one do you prefer. I am very curious to know. But ultimately, if you want to have great results with images of the night sky, you should just drive away into a place that has low levels of light pollution so you can save you the hassle and basically make the post-processing workflow a lot, a lot easier and also produce better results because nothing really beats a truly dark sky. But if you are living in an urban area like I do, you can always grab something like this. This is the um, light pollution filter from Astronomic that I have recently purchased for my uh, Canon EOS R. And I have yet to test this filter. I haven't tested it yet. I have actually made an unboxing video and first look about this. So if you want to check it out, I will link it up here. It looks pretty awesome, it looks really promising, I need to test it out in the field and I will definitely be creating videos 
about testing this filter and reviewing whether using a filter like this actually makes your images a lot better than, than without the filter. So if you want to check out those videos, definitely consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on those videos. I will also be posting a lot more astrophotography related content on this channel in this year and following years probably as well. So consider subscribing and also if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. But like I said, that's it for now. Have a good day, see you next time and bye bye.